build our future, one piece at a time. Calgary, 1966. A brand new standalone facility, the first of its kind in North America. Built with true Alberta pioneering spirit, the Foothills General Hospital opens its doors, offering care for 800 patients, educational facilities for medical students and student nurses, as well as technical medical programs. A hospital of the 20th century. The Calgary Health Region, both urban and rural, is now one of the largest healthcare regions in Canada. Canadian healthcare now faces challenges of patient safety, workforce retention, better efficiency, and stronger communication. In 2002, an extraordinary opportunity presented itself. John Conley, head of internal medicine at the Foothills Medical Center, and Andrea Robertson, vice president of the South Health Campus, were charged with moving a medical unit into an available open space. And so I was approached to move a medical unit into a vacated area. And I said to John one day outside the elevator where our offices are, I said to him, so we've got to move uh, a group of patients, who should we move? And he honestly, on a dime, turned to me and said, well, we should create the, the war of the future. And I, you know, I don't know if you use war of the 21st century. No, do you I said, remember? let's do something very different. You know, this could be a great opportunity to do something that we had never done before. Ward 36 of the Foothills Medical Center would become the ward of the 21st century. Split into two phases, it would first open as a 36-bed ward, followed by an on-site research facility. When we sat and really thought about the patients that would most benefit, we looked at all of our medical patients and chose the patients that were the most complex. Yeah, it was the, uh, the medical teaching unit, which outside of the intensive care is probably the most high demand uh, patients that we uh, take care of in terms of the nursing care and also the complexity of the care delivered from a medical perspective. And in addition, we talked about the ability to do uh, this excellence of care delivery with a team-based concept, but in a very highly uh, technologically sophisticated environment. A team of researchers and care providers using the very best technologies working toward a new level of patient care. We formed a, a number of teams and as Andrea said, it was frontline people and in fact, one of the things that they did is the nursing and the medical staff, the training staff, the residents and others uh, just uh, picked this up and uh, really uh, took to it very much. Right from the day we sat down and started this unit, they were on the clinical design team of this unit. And we, we watched how they conducted business, how did they physically take care of patients, and what environment would allow them to do a better job. A team design ward, researching evidence-based solutions to current healthcare challenges built to provide the best patient care. It grew from there to, uh, well, let's see uh, what a sociologist would think of using some new technologies and how it's going to impact nursing care. So there were people studying how these innovations would impact on patient care and quality of care and patient safety issues for the patient side of things, but there weren't people who were going to be looking at, well, what happens when you introduce a piece of innovation to the ward? How does it affect the workplace? How does it affect people that are using it? You know, once you involve one faculty, it becomes the obvious question, who are we missing? Because health is not just about biology. It's about social things, it's about cultural things, it's about interactions between people. I'm really interested in cases where people um, purposefully uh, attempt to change their own culture and, uh, and attempt to change the way they use technology. You know, it was one idea that just grew and bloomed. One idea begat another and yeah. another and another and it was like a whole series of uh, flowers just uh, starting to come out and bloom in the sun. In May 2004, the ward of the 21st century opened its doors, designed by a unique team for a radically new approach to patient care. So W21C, how unique is this unit from other units in the region? Certainly as an integral part of the Foothills Medical Center service delivery, um, it's a very key, key participant in the management of patient care. 
The thing that makes it unique is the fact that a decision has been made to have this a unit with a culture of innovation. A culture of innovation in research and patient care. At the forefront of patient care lies the issue of safety. There were some problems that we were try trying to specifically address and one that floated to the top was infection. And so the drive towards mm -hmm. more private rooms and so you know, two benefits from private rooms, one being infection. Back in, in around 2004, there was a very important uh, study published in the Canadian medical literature. There may be as many as 20,000 people dying in any given year in relation to suboptimal safety and quality of care in Canadian hospitals. Well, if you compare W21C two years running, and uh, looked at the same patient population, or the same type of patient population in the ward that this uh, medical teaching unit was housed in before, uh, that the rates have dropped 75%. But private rooms do more than prevent infection. The other being that it's pretty nice for the patient. It's quieter, you get more sleep, and mm -hmm. there is some limited literature showing that in private rooms patients actually their length of stay is shorter because they get better faster. We can be there with the patient, the patient is a centre, the family is a centre and it provides us with the best nursing care. My name is Catherine Olson and I'm a quadriplegic. This hospital is more specialised to take care of my needs personally I feel. And I would say that, that this one would be the one that I would choose to come back to. We also have a family room at the end of the hall if anyone needs to do a family conference or if we have a patient that uh, needs family to stay overnight, we have somewhere where they can go. And so we're worried about having enough doctors, nurses, pharmacists and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And you know, we need to really be thinking about how to do things more efficiently. And one of the ideas was, you know, and this is just another example about thinking differently. Well, if we could do all of your vital signs, so your blood pressure, heart rate, et cetera, and that just goes into the computers automatically. Over a wireless environment. Yeah, and so the nurses are like, okay, that's good. We'll just put on a Dynamap and that'll record. And then the engineers are like, no, no, no. We could probably put a, just a little sensor on your skin and get your, and so we're like, what? So all of a sudden, a small idea to be more efficient with our time mm -hmm. in, in trying to get the care provided led to a completely different solution. And this led to the whole concept of uh, wireless monitoring of vital signs. And then that improves efficiency because what you're doing is uh, allowing nursing staff and others to provide more of the care delivery. So it became a high-tech, high-touch environment. On this unit, we do everything uh, via computer charting, especially in the nursing notes, and it's just a safe, easy way to access the notes, look back at notes. Um, you know, we don't have to look at deciphering handwriting or anything like that. Everyone thinks technology mm -hmm. means you're further away from the patient, and the intent is to bring you closer to the patient. Harness the technology to allow the staff to become closer to the patient and provide excellence in care delivery. We have very spacious educational facilities that allow for, for wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful learning experiences in, in spacious, comfortable facilities, uh, and the list goes on. There's also a commitment in the staff on this unit to undertake a, a research and innovation agenda, so not just to provide care. Research carried out at a unique level in a space we invite you to become part of as we build phase two of the ward of the 21st century. Imagine a 6,000 square foot multidisciplinary research lab where research is carried out steps away from the patients and staff who will benefit most. Physicians, engineers, anthropologists, psychologists, sociologists, nurses, patients, all under the same roof. It's the opportunity to create what we call a living laboratory. And this would be a, a clinical laboratory so that new uh, technologies, new modalities of care delivery can be introduced in an environment where you've got a team-based care delivery and 
It also uh, may translate into learnings being taken to a national level so that we felt at the end of the day we may be able to change the face of care delivery across the nation. So traditionally we do research and we do work in silos for lack of a better word and so engineers do engineering research on their own and human factors does mm -hmm. research on their own in medicine and nursing and so on and so forth but it's putting everybody in a room and saying well gee I didn't know that and then learning from one another rather than just be working with people from other professions they will start conceiving of problems in a very multifaceted way so the social scientist won't just conceive of a problem of interest to, to him or her. He or she will start thinking about things um, in, a, in a very broad way that will incorporate what the clinicians are interested in and what the other basic scientists are interested in. That environment is going to create research that's never been done before. So living lab on a completely different scale because we haven't integrated those people in a place where patients are being cared for. Mm -hmm. We've never done that. Like in today's age where we communicate email and, and telephone. And we can learn a lot from each other and we can inform each other a lot. But when you really want to understand, when you really want to bring depth and meaning to something, you arrange a face-to-face -face meeting. They will see our real patients in their real environment when they're sick and get such a sense of what it is that we do. And we will be able to interact with them face-to-face. Just being present on the unit, you see things that you wouldn't otherwise see, that you wouldn't ask about in a survey or you wouldn't ask about in an interview. So just capturing the, the really subtle shifts that change throughout the day, throughout the week on the unit and picking those up by being here on a more frequent basis. There's the real opportunity to do transformative research and, and to our knowledge there's no, no place internationally that, that will bring together all in a, in a living laboratory facility like this one. We have a responsibility to build health care that will respond to the needs of our future. People are the future. People with needs, people with solutions. The ward of the 21st century is a small group of those people, dedicated to excellence, dedicated to caring for others, dedicated to the future of health care with all the issues that we see in the newspaper every day about physician shortages, nurse shortages, mistakes being made in hospitals due to physician shortages, due to stress, and being able to study that and know that your research is going to make a difference. So to have this opportunity after all these years, I get to bring my experience of nursing, of staffing patients, and, and I feel like, wow, it feels like I'm starting all over again. But you know what, it's just about getting people and allowing them to dream and you know what the frontline people mm -hmm. who care for patients every day absolutely know what needs to change mm -hmm. and then you put them in contact with people who think a completely different way and wow yeah. right help us build that future piece by piece our living laboratory <laughs>